The heart knows. The mind is dumb. So I just sit here, 10 seconds preparation for making this video, reminding myself that the information isn't contained in the mind, it's contained in the soul. And five minutes before making this video, I was just letting the thoughts go and then thinking, oh, I need to remember that, but it's not, it's much better when it can just flow from the heart. So that's what I'm going to do. Hello to you. I've been um, thinking I need to make a video because of the what I want to communicate, what I want to get across and um, I've been struggling to find a sort of a word that can that can describe something and then I just watched a video from someone called um, Quantum Conscience and um, he called it a, re a reality bubble and um, that word did fit. We all have our own reality bubble and um, that's what I want to talk about. You could call it your perception. Your perception contains everything there. It's, it's the way to describe um, the deepest feelings we have when strange things happen, when our beliefs are changing or adapting. It's our perception. And you can get very deep in your perception where it becomes an all-encompassing all encompassing feeling that you're just in it. It's in you. It's, it's everything. It's everything there is. So obviously usually in the day we're walking around our perception is what we see and hear and touch and smell and taste but then things happen that go beyond those five senses and we could call them the sixth sense but there's probably millions So I was going to explain a bit about when I get something on that soul level, the way it can, the way it can, um, there can be like a tint of colour to everything. So I could have a, a vision, say, a picture in my mind, which is normal tint. But then something comes to me, a picture in my mind, and it has a tint there is colour, but the colour is meaningful and it means something to the heart you know, it's not necessarily something you can just put into words but also recently I've noticed also that it has a taste well you could say that everything in a something that comes to you, a vision, a picture if you get sensitive enough you get a colour tint and if you get sensitive even more it starts to have a taste so your soul almost tastes it and in that taste knows if it's nice <laughs> or not right so now I get on to what I wanted to talk about and so we all have this perception and it's changing all the time, right? Depending on what you're doing and what you believe. Now, they are connected. We are connected. So, if I have a particular belief about something, let's say 
a favourite car, right? So say my favourite car is a red Ferrari GTO. On a quantum level, everyone who also has a favourite car, red Ferrari GTO, is in a sense going to get connected to me. So on a quantum level, on the soul level, and we share a connection, we share, yeah, we believe that the favourite car is a red Ferrari GTO, right? And then, say there's thousands of people whose favourite car is a red Ferrari GTO. We'll all have this sort of similar perception and, and a connection. And then too, that is going to divide us from all the people whose favourite car is a yellow Lamborghini. And we're going to be slightly different on that particular subject. But then we all say love cars. So then now we're connected on that particular subject. And you see this in religions, of course. So, you know, someone with exactly the same religion is going to like you and you're going to like them because you believe in the same thing and it so on this deep down level it's got a color tint it's got a taste there's something about this belief system right and so what i've noticed so here coming to the crux of it i'm watching a video on youtube about the mandela effect and they're showing me evidence that something has gone back in time and changed reality back, say, 70 years ago. And now, you know, and we've, and the manifested change has happened at some point, but we didn't notice it. And, you know, this is the Mandela effect. Now, as soon as I if you like, try out that belief, because in a sense the only way to to test it is to just take it on for a second or two and just say, wow, is that possible? You know, be open-minded to it, right? And what I've noticed with the Mandela effect is I, if I, when I've done that, I've sensed this, this, if you like, this connection to others who have this reality in their perception, who perceive it to be like this. And there's a taste, there's a colour tint, there's something about it. And that could make me think, wow, yeah, it's true. Because I would be encouraged by the people believing, who are currently believing in this, and having this in their reality bubble, I would be encouraged by them to join. And the more people who joined that Mandela effect, the stronger that would be. And um, the Mandela effect one, it is, you know, there, there's something not nice about it. You know, just to believe that reality could be changed like that, that words in a book could be changed. Uh, so, you know, I, I sense that about it. It's not, you know, there's nothing particularly nice about, about it, I've got to say. Whereas I found the flat earth one quite different. I, the flat earth belief, perception, reality bubble, is is quite nice in a way it's quite warm and um quite loving i just find it restricting i find it because i like the idea that space is out there you know ever since a young kid i've been interested in the stars and i found it more interesting so I choose, you know, to have the belief that I want. Everybody has a right to believe in the 
belief they want. So the flat earth can be quite a nice warm belief, nice perception in a sense. And <clears throat> so far as affecting your life and the truth that you know, it's not a big deal. But the Mandela effect, I think, is a lot worse and, and could, you know, can take you down a, a not very nice path. Now, how about the reality perception when we include God? Because you've got your own reality bubble, but what about what's outside of your reality bubble? Because there's always that. And if you got in your belief perception that there's God outside of a reality bubble, we're in God. God is there. An all loving God. You know, now you've got a much nicer reality bubble. But if you can believe it, because you have to be able to make sense of it. And I think, you know, it's not the easiest thing to do to b believe that God is always there. But it certainly is possible. And it is the path that we're designed to take ultimately. However we get there, we'll get there. I also remember the reality bubble of Divine Truth, A.J. Miller, and it was a very God-like feeling. Um, felt like I was in the classroom, <laughs> and almost like the classroom of Mother and Father God, in a way, represented by Alan and Mary. You know, it had this reality bubble to it, and and I could, I could um, imagine that all I had to do was just listen to them and do what they said I should do, and take their recommendations, and and then I would be on this path to, you know, unfolding more and more happiness and you know, just becoming, going up levels of spheres and, and, you know, and I had this sort of concept of it, like it was a, you know, like it was a school thing, like you go up in the years and there's all this hierarchy in a sense, you know, and that was a reality bubble that I lived for a few months. And I think it sort of slowly petered out. And if that was five years ago, what's happened in my life since has been, has, you know, I have increased in happiness. Um, I've noticed I'm not as passionate as I used to be, but I notice that passion often comes from a place of entrapment. Y you know, you, you, you trap something where you want to get out. That's found sort of passion, kind of my passion anyway. Anyway, I wanted to get that in there, but that wasn't the point. So over the last five years, you know, it has, it has happened, but it certainly isn't like the conception I thought when I first got into Divine Truth. You know, it's been much more up and down. There's, there's been loads of ups and downs, and there always will be, and it's like zigzag as well, you know, not you're not, it's not just a straight, it says about being a narrow path, it never says about being a straight path. I think there's the straight and narrow gate, that doesn't make sense, or the straight gate, I'm not sure what that means, but it's not a straight path, right? It's not just, yep, you've got the answer now, straight, you do everything right, forever, for the rest of your life. You carry on making slight errors, but slightly 
were not as bad errors as you were making before and it's all part of the course to learn from your mistakes. So that's reality. So are there things we need to cling on to with our reality base? You know, you, you're going to go a bit out of your comfort zones, but we all do it when we want to come back a bit, you know, and you can easily do that. You can just concentrate on something else, eat some food usually helps, or smoke a fag. <laughs> You know, we need God so much. So, on to what's going on in the world. Um, you know, all this, all these different perceptions of beliefs going on, and that it's just. We just had uh, Alex Jones and Joe Rogan a uh, long talk that uh, everyone's, a lot of people are buzzing about. There was a lot of information dropped in that talk. Uh, it seemed it seemed all very sincere between them all, but you know, he knows. I can't believe Alex Jones is only forty-five. Was that a mistake? He said. Really. Um, he said about the aliens that they're called elves. He said it after, but the first time he said, it, "Yeah, the elves." <laughs> what did I say in my faithful philosopher t videos about Santa's helpers, God's helpers? They're the only aliens. They're the two hundred who were here uh, during when we were lower humans. Um, they built the pyramids, they're on the far side of the moon, they're going to stop us from mining outside of the earth, they're not going to let us mine the moon or the asteroids probably or the Mars. Um, they called them the elves. <laughs> and then he said later the greys and the elves, and but you know, he's Alex Jones all over the place, he dropped drop in information a lot of information and to me a lot of it sounded pretty truthful you know the moon landing things about how the footage is fake but they did go to the moon um, is interesting um, I did I have since been wondering about if it was possible for them to go to the moon because they were given some technology in order to do it and that was a coating on the spacesuits and the rocket, uh, a gold coating, so they could still see through it, but it, and then done in some way that it could block the radiation because that's what it says in the emerald tablets of how Thoth got his spaceship to Earth and protected the radiation with the a layer of gold. It says that in the tablets, and you see on some of these pictures the gold tint on the visor of the and if that's why they haven't still got that technology because they're not they're still not able to layer it on the way it's done I mean it's possible it's possible but the footage that we see of the moon lands everyone accepts that was fake so so that was a bit of information they had in that video um, there was loads obviously I'm not going to just reiterate it all but to me it's got this feeling that there's just so much stuff going on. People are just being pulled here, there and everywhere that it looks like it's time for something to break. For something to break through. Uh, the, you know, an actual truth that people can rely on test out for themselves, be happy with, 
you know, and that is that God is our mother and father, <laughs> and we're in God. You know, that is what would help everybody. You know, this video I just watched, this guy, Quantum Conscience, saying about how, you know, with with people believing in Mandela Effect and such things, and then, and f false flag events and the evil gov government, and by feeding these things on, they're feeding on their perceptions of hell, and that's what the evil elite are trying to do. Um, and when I was, you know, in the beginnings of really trying to feel my soul, what was one of the main motivations to go through with it, even though it was when it was getting scary, the feelings, you know, thought my heart might do something, you know, those sort of feelings, those worrying feelings. The motivation to drive me through was that they didn't want me to do it. That I was, I was ignoring the phone ringing, I was ignoring my phone texting, you know, it was coming to this critical point, this meditation, and I could really feel it coming. And the phone was ringing, the phone was texting, it was it was just sales calls, you know, afterwards I did check, but I could have been thinking, shit, is that a job? Am I supposed to pick it up? You know, I need to earn money, obviously, do 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 But I didn't, right? And I, and I accomplished something by going through the fear and, and everything else, and staying with it, and, you know, in whatever belief perception I had at the time, stayed in it and I've progressed to the point you know where I, I understand what I am and and how you know all those little things that may get you down don't really matter and that the truth is marvelous and wonderful and uh, yeah obviously you know, I have wanted to share that because I can see how the more people who go around with this sort of positive belief system, the happier the world can be. And it's going to be so much easier to be happy if everybody else is happy, right? But, you know, the evil elite probably have control over how... YouTube videos are recommended and such. They don't mine don't get anywhere pretty much most of the time. You never know though which one might so you can't give up. Gotta keep going. Yeah. So <clears throat> and it's not just about being positive for positive sake. You have to really believe it. But you have to seek. You have to seek. God. So we are, we are these incredible, amazing beings. Yeah, Alex Jones dropped it, you know, 11 dimensions. He said 11, or oh, maybe 12. It's 11. Drop that in there. So there's 11 dimensions. Time and love encompass three dimensions of three dimensions, right? So this dimension has three dimensions, up, down, and across. And you've got the dreamscape, the dream world. This is, um, you know, I think we get a lot of messages, we're in God, right? This planet is in God, right? And when we dream, whatever planet we're walking around on is in God, and... God comes in a lot. <clears throat> and then you've got the, the main realm, where the, 
where our souls do all the feeling and all the love, you know, is getting thrown around and we love love. We stop questioning when we feel love. <laughs> it's like, I don't care what the reality is, I love this love, this is great stuff. <laughs> stop questioning it. It is, you know, it's a choice. You choose to love. Because the opposite of love is nothingness. So, what are you going to do? You can choose love, aren't you? You would. Everybody does in the end. <laughs> so we got this. We got these amazing machines, and these bodies. These bodies are capable. Of of um, perceiving it all. You know this. When when these physical bodies were first made. Um, the, f the first Adam and Eve, if you like, the first physical body capable of knowing what it is. So I believe. I'm starting to think now that Adam and Eve was more like 26,000 years ago, something like that. And then we get to Noah, and now we're in sort of like 7,000 years to go. Something like that. <laughs> Rough. <coughs> so all the Cain stuff and the Lamech stuff happened, you know, like, longer ago than what I thought before. But, you know, this was the, you know, we'd been going up through higher and higher forms of uh, being, like, you know, reptiles to mammals, right? And then apes, and then a form of human that's capable of knowing what it is. So right at the beginning, when the when the body was first made, yeah, it was you know feeling the soul and everything, hundred percent. You know, it was the machine was fully able. And throughout the generations, you know. Some have held on to the knowledge, whereas there's been a, a cut off, a divide. You know, they're the servants. They they don't don't give the knowledge to them because they just need to do the shit we want them to do. And and they don't want us to know. They don't want us to know. That's why all the efforts is going into. Um, you know, making up other darker, weird stuff that will put the masses off seeking. You know, they'll get near something like, oh, that's a bit weird, and oh, that bothers me, quite rightly. I'll stay away from that shit. I'll just get on with my job and my money, and drink my wine and watch the TV. Because they don't want us all to know the wonderful truth because in everything will be wonderful and lovely and so far they have depended on having a tear stage for them to find it wonderful and lovely You know, I wouldn't want to be raptured. I wouldn't want to be... I wouldn't want God just come... <laughs> suck the good people off and leave the rest to fiery hell. Obviously, it's not nice, is it? But we, I really want to be around, right? I really want to be around watching to see what God does. I mean, it is fascinating all the different complexities of things going on. I mean, it's just, it's just really amazing. You know, <laughs> truth is certainly makes the best stories. But, yeah, we need to be around and see exactly how God 
turns these things around. And, you know, I'm trying to do my bit as much as I possibly can. And everybody's doing their bit. How is it all going to weave together and come out wonderful? <laughs> or, well, I guess it will be gradual, right? Everything I've noticed about this, ever since I've been into this, you know, everyone's been expecting a whopping massive thing to happen. Now, things have happened, but what I've really noticed is how they've been changing gradually. You know, and, and gradual change is permanent change. You don't, you know, if you had just this one big massive change and then that was all it, that was all done, and I don't know. It wouldn't be the same, would it? You'd look back and you'd, I think you'd look back more and think, well, what, what if, what if? But I think because of this gradual change, you know, you wouldn't want to go back because there's so many things have happened that, and yeah gradual change you know there's a, certainly a, a thing like you get onto truth and it's great to realize your mistakes and then you you look back and you think you know well it's then it's putting it into action in the in the day to day and um realizing when you're about to make the same errors as you've made before but then thinking oh now but now I know now I know that's not right. I mean, the way I've gone, because that has very much been the divine truth, you know, like uh, talking about growing your willpower to resist doing the, the things that you used to want to do, the addictions and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, even though A.J. Miller said not to do that, people have still been like that. Because I guess he says not to do it once, but then he makes like 20 sort of things like, oh, but you're carrying on your addictions. And blah, blah, blah. So, you know, he infers it 20 times that you should resist. And I've very much found resisting is wrong, right? You resist, no. Allow, yes. So, you know, with the smoking thing, I see it as a dependence. I still do it. So I'm not perfect. I have lots of excuses <laughs> that I'm working through. But one thing I've, and I say is touch wood, right? I've conquered the, the sexual lust feelings. Like, they just, I probably haven't conquered it forever. There'll probably be still one that will get me. <laughs> Last time I made a video talking about it, and then as soon as I finished making the video, I had this massive lust I couldn't. <laughs> and it was like a girl from my old school, like I never even thought of her since almost, and then suddenly, boom, boom, it was so strong. Anyway, what I've done the whole time is I, uh, you know, I haven't resisted, so... But each time I was, I was aware while I was doing it and afterwards and everything you know so I was watching as well from a distance I was doing it but I was also watching myself do it and seeing you know the result and stuff and and I was learning about why I was doing it and eventually I've I come to a I come to a, a correct conclusion, but and I how do I know it's correct? Because I employ it and it works. And the correct conclusion was the yearning, the desire for tits and bums and stuff like that, in a sense, comes from a very young age. You know, and at that young age, that, that tit there was for food. We needed that 
food from mother, right? And back then, being a baby, we're still feeling Mother God, and we're in Mother God. So it was actually the sexual thoughts were coming because I thought that was what I wanted. But the, the yearning was actually for my Mother God, yet twisted perceptions growing up in this world, right? It's not surprising that I thought the answer was a woman in a bikini, you know. Whereas actually, it was just to feel my mother God. So I corrected my my reactions to that yearning. And I, no, I don't want sexual thoughts, I want mother God. And that took over. And it's worked. I don't, not making that connection anymore so the sexual thoughts aren't coming. And it's not difficult, and I haven't had to resist. I haven't resisted anything, I've just allowed it, and that way come to understand it more. <laughs> because everything you do perpetuates, you know, it's that thing, you know, love begets love. So me sitting there thinking about sexy girls is going to perpetuate that. You know, it's going to be my reality bubble, it's going to connect with other people's reality bubbles who have the same thing. So make your reality bubble, make it and force it, <laughs> be aware of your reality bubble and the effect it has on others. But you always get the result of your reality bubble and as we don't like unpleasant results, because if they're not loving, they're going down the slippery slope to nothingness. And that's not a nice place to be. So that's how we learn. And when we're at our lowest point, that's usually when we cry out for God. And God will be there. Nati will be there to see you through. Oh, ain't it good to know now? Ja, we'll be waiting there. Wait in summer, wait in spring, wait in autumn, winter thing. <laughs> Sorry, I'm never really, I still don't understand what winter thing. The almond tree blossoms in winter, apparently. Anyway, <coughs> there's always more to know. Always more to know. Where was I? Yeah, God will be there. When you call out, you get to that lowest point. You'll call out for God. Because you know God. You know, even if you're 60 years old now, that 60 years of your existence is nothing. <laughs> so, yeah, just, again, just very looking forward to how things are going to pan out. Like, I say, something is about to break through. It could be, uh, this, um, it could be the, uh, spirits talking through, uh, they're making these electronic devices, they're, they're improving on them. Saw a video earlier. That could be the thing. It, God, right? God's plan, God's timing. <whistles> Very good. <laughs> March 22nd this year, I know I've said it so many years, March 22nd always seems like a thing and then nothing happens. But a lot of things point in towards it with the Jewish Purim thing and it, um, it's on the day before the Sabbath. Um, you'll, have to, you'll have to watch some of the videos about Purim. But, do you know what I mean? It's, it looks like it's, uh, what's the word, ripe? 
Just, just the right conditions. Just the right conditions. Anyway, it'll be what it'll be. Okay, I think that'll do. So, um... So, yeah, I'll do what I can and leave the rest to God. I think that's good advice. And, um... I've got a message for you out there. Join the... Join the perception of... <laughs> a God-ruled universe which is loving and wonderful. And we... Gone through these last few thousand years of what seems like, you know, not very nice stuff, is the birth pangs of us becoming aware of what we really are. And it's happening. It's happened for some already. And it's going to happen for everyone, however long it takes. Okay. Ciao.